Okay, welcome to the uh, FXR race review here. We are now at round seven at Riverglade. I'm on my own here, so I am joined by partner here at the track, Larry Northrup. Larry, thank you very much for hanging out and uh, doing this. Great, glad to be here. It was uh, a wonderful day today. Dude, you're, uh, you're uh, downplaying it, because I mean, I've been to every single round, and this one stood out. The place filled up, man. You had like, you had a line up to get in here, you had people lining the fences. Dude, it looked like something was going on. Yeah, we, we were very fortunate. I mean, just having the uh, consistency every year after year of having a national consistent day, uh, we got moto people around here, they just love it. Now, were you worried with the fact that we had the pandemic, we had two years off? Were you worried, or were you thinking, no way, people are gonna come back because we're back? I think a lot of people are just just happy to get out and do things and be, get the new normal, right? And that was the best thing. I mean, I just can't thank the fans, the people that come out to support us. It's, it makes our day. It's just seeing the people in the crowd and loving the race. Right, right. Now, obviously, you're wearing several hats here. I mean, I think I you almost ran me over a whole bunch of times there on the start uh, starting gate there. Yeah. I'm trying to take pictures, and you're also you're trying to fix the damn start straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just fun. Like that's like any track owner in the, in Canada. It's not like you you got to wear a few hats and make things happen. And we're like say, uh, I have two great partners that we work with every day, Lee and Earl. And uh, you know what? We're uh, we're just blessed to work with each other. All right, man. Well, and you're also the Toys for Big Boys uh, guy here. We better uh, throw a plug in there for sure. So uh, cool to see you wore even another hat, right? So uh, I guess the shop is closed today, though. Yeah, shop is closed today. So it's Sunday, so it's all good. You don't feel so guilty <laughs> for not being there. Yeah. All right, now the other thing too it was hot. Man, it was hot. It was not normally this hot here. Yeah, like it was a it, heat wave down here, and uh, Saturday and Sunday, so the amateur day was brutal. We ran about 36 motos yesterday, so it was nuts. So. Uh, not as many breaks as what we get in the national day. We can put a little time in to irrigate and do a few things. So a little easier day today. Not easier, but prep-wise, it made it nice. Right, right. Now, I uh, I saw a lot more flat tires than I've ever seen before here. I mean, there there are a few guys in the in the uh, 450 class that actually finished with their flats. The 250, it, it ended up playing into a big part in the points because, of, well, we'll talk about that when we get to the 250s, but uh, yeah. I saw a lot of flats. Yeah, I think just, it was it was a tough track today. Like I mean, we it was ruddy. It was early. It was we put a lot of water down. The teams told us last night, like get the water on, rip, put water, rip, put water. So we just ripped, put water down, and uh, <laughs> like they said, and it made the track uh, tougher. I mean, very raceable though. I thought. I mean, there was yeah. tons of rust. I mean, Walton obviously is known for rust, but I think you guys, uh, man, you really rutted this place up. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us today was. Uh, just ripping it and watering good and making uh, making those ruts. So, you know, we, the rut's an obstacle on a motocross track. As much as a jump or anything exactly, else, or exactly. a berm or whatever, it's, it's nice to be able to do that because it separates riders and different lines people are taking. And it, you can see people passing on straightaways just because of ruts, yeah. which was awesome to see. Yeah. So, yeah, there was, yeah, it was, yeah, if you saw some of the videos, if you watch it on Ride TV Live or we'll put up our, our little recap and stuff like that. But yeah, check out the ruts because it was, it was, it was pretty amazing. Um, okay, let's talk. It was switched around, so the 450s went first. So we want to talk about a few things here. Um, I want to just as I go, kind of go through your things I saw here. Davey Fraser uh, made an appearance yeah, here. Yeah, it was awesome to see Davey. Out. Just what? Great. I don't know what happened though. He had uh, he had troubles in the first, and then the second yeah. he's a DNF. I don't. Uh, yeah, it just just tough. Davey's been working, trying to do it. Like it's like everybody. It's sometimes things just life happens, right? So I can't <laughs> put the time into racing and everything else like uh, you used to. So it makes it tough. But uh, yeah, it was just great to see Davey out this weekend. Awesome to see him. Just a great friend and person to be around. Awesome. It's nice to have him this week. He calls BC home now, though. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know how yeah. that sits with you, but no, it's, it's all good. It, that's his home now. It's home's where you hang your hat, right? So, <laughs> but uh, he's always going to be a maritimer. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now, as I moved up here, I just made a couple notes here. Yannick Boucher, kind of a perennial fighter for that top ten position. There's a few guys that uh, he's always yeah. battling with. He had a flat, so I know he finished with it though. So that was kind of good for him to do that. Yeah. He went 16:20 uh, for uh, back uh, 18. So he's obviously not going to be happy about that. But uh, I just want to mention him just because of the flats. Brett Young, I mean, I, I did an interview with him afterwards. I mean, local fast guy. I'm like, why don't we see you west of here? Yeah. And uh, But he says, ah, I never really thought about doing the national seriously. But yeah. uh, he had a pretty good day. Had to come yeah. through the field. Yeah, he had a great day. I saw he was like 16th in the first photo. Yeah, I think he went, uh, what do you go here? We got him right uh, here. 14-15 for 14. For 14. Yeah. yeah, so great day for Brett. Good rider, solid, solid rider. Tons All of the fan support. Oh, oh yeah, people were just screaming his name, so it was great to see. And uh, yeah, good to see Brett out there. He was just having a ball. You could tell he was enjoying the riding, and yeah, Brett's just one of these guys that just enjoyed riding his dirt bike. Yeah, for sure, for sure. He said I think he's going to uh, Deschambeau now, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, so that's be good. good to push that. Yeah. And another flat tire at Tommy Delaire again. I just yeah. uh, just mentioning that it was kind of uh-huh. tough, but they finished. He finished with the flat. We'll get uh, we'll get further on that in a second here. But um, I don't know what happened to Felix uh, Lopez. He was seven uh, fourteen. I'm not sure what happened to him in that second yeah. moto. But uh, anyway, that's obviously not where he should be in eleventh. Um, Weston Rosina talking about the top 10 here. Weston obviously again normally in some good battles up at the front. He's a top five contender. Um, he had a crash. His bike was all bent. I thought I thought he was heading back to the pits. Next thing you know he was back up to speed. He was racing. Ended yeah. up uh, he ended up 12th in that. Went 12-9. Yeah I seen him. His bars were all kind of sideways. Yeah. And he also yeah I seen him out there. It was just tough on him. But he uh he busted through it, man. Yeah, yeah, good for him. I, like I say, I thought he was going to head to the pits, but he didn't. Um, T uh, T Parrot's back. Um, he's back from his. He's got a broken bone in his foot, so he's back on the over there with the man luck guys. He went 10-10 for ninth. So good to see him yeah. back. I mean, we need we need guys in that 450 class. I mean, the gates weren't full, unfortunately, so yeah. everybody that came here got in. Um, but the racing was still good. But uh, it'd be nice to see qualifiers and things. And I mean, oh, he's yeah, not there I, yet, I guess. Yes. And how about the guy finished at him? Eighth place, Mitch Cook. Oh yeah, Mitch was on it today and riding hard and uh, just out there with that last photo. It's it just good to see Mitch back out there riding, having a, having a great time. <laughs> and, and you can tell, he, Mitch just loves riding his dirt bike. He loves riding his dirt bike. I don't think he really loved it out there today though, he said. I interviewed him afterwards too yeah. and it was a, yeah, the, he's not into going out there ruts and going bar to bar anymore, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's 38 years old, so good for him. Yeah. For uh, We knew he'd be in the top 10 though. He went 9-7, yeah. made tons of passes in that first moto, I think it was. Yeah. Second one, he ended up on his own out there. Uh, but uh, yeah, he sounds like, uh, I mean, Alex and the guys over at uh, the Cobbequid team, they are trying to keep, well, they tried to get him at every round, but I think yeah. he, we're gonna see him at the next couple, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I saw an Adam Turner and he said, yeah, he said, oh, yeah. He's, just, he's not real pumped for Dejumbo, but uh, I got him. Still going to work on him. Make sure he's there. So. Excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, a nice solid day for uh, Daniel Elmore. Uh, again, he's a guy that uh, we're kind of waiting on that breakthrough one. He's just a tiny bit off those top guys, but he's got everybody else covered. Uh, eight five for him for seventh. So congrats on to him. Uh, I was really impressed with Logan Lightsell actually today, number twenty out there. He got some great starts. He was up there battling. He, 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 Came back, dropped back a tiny bit, so he ended up 6-6 uh, six, six for 6th overall, but uh, I thought he looked really good. I uh, know, it, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris Blackmer, a bit of a story there. Um, we didn't even think he was going to ride from that big crash he had at Sandalee. Yeah. Thought he was going to take it easy yesterday, ended up racing. He's out there, great starts. He gets like 120 pounds, buck. Uh, uh, soaking wet is the uh, is the term. Uh, through, third in the first one looked great. Second one up there again started falling back. I thought there was an issue. I saw him kind of holding his arm afterwards. Turns out he was throwing up in his helmet. Oh. <laughs> so, so I don't know if you ever tried to race while you're throwing up. That's nah, not That's great. Funny. Yeah, he was. He yesterday he was having fun. He's with their crowd riding. loves him. Yeah, he's just a great rider. He just got great style. And uh, then you know, very classy. I mean. He was, didn't want to mess people's points up, so they got pulled off, everything yeah. else at the last Yeah, that was cool. That was, that was and it was nice. just like, you know what, classy guy. So it's like, you know yeah. what, I don't want to mess these guys' points, so I'm just going to just pull off and let them go. But I ride a little bit and had some fun. Yeah, no, he said, I asked him straight up, I go, is that because of the crash you had at Sandalee? He said, no, it wasn't. He said he was just trying to stay, it was so hot. He was trying to stay so hydrated, get some food in. Everything just kind of started sitting up higher and higher. I mean, I was trying to keep drinking too, but he it it just stopped uh, being able to work. It was just uh, like him, it was just sort of sitting there. But uh, so yeah, Chris Blackmore, tough for their uh, throwing up and stuff like that. He was fifth overall, 3-8. Tanner Ward again. He's a he's a he's a fourth place guy. I mean, he wants to make up there in those top three. It's going to be tough. He's he's got everybody behind him covered. He he was up there in the first one. Had some troubles. I guess he actually crashed. Went down to eighth. Came back up to a fifth. Five four for fourth for him. Yeah. Uh, again, it drives him nuts. He wants to be up there on that podium as well. And he was on it though. I mean, he, he had good he had a good pace going. And everything else just yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. There's not too many. Uh, that's what's crash going on his feet. No, for sure. And then that, uh, we might as well talk about these two guys at the same time. I mean, I'm talking about Sean Moffenbeier, Tyler Medallia. Man, obviously yeah. the crowd was going nuts for Tyler. Yeah. Uh, Moff, Moff went, uh, he crashed in the first one. 4-3 for him, 2-2 two, two again for Tyler. Uh, I mean, these guys, Tyler led that uh, for the second one for a little bit there. Yeah, um, they led the first one too. The first one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, those those guys are just battling. They and you talk to both of them, they'll be like, uh, "I love racing them because they're going to battle hard, but they're going to battle fair and clean." Yeah. No, he was nice, clean passes. Like that was the best thing about today was uh, any of the passes that were made. You could just look out and see, okay, go buy him here, go buy him. I mean, that's that's what the ruts do, right? It just makes it easier for somebody to you know, take a different line and make it happen. Right, right, and both of them 
want so badly to uh, break the streak of this next guy we're going to talk about. Uh, obviously, I've never seen it done before. I don't think it's ever been done, obviously. I don't even think Ross Patterson did it back in the day. But uh, Dylan Wright, the streak continues. He didn't do it the easy way. He had to make passes again. Yeah. He gets it done. He's actually got broken ribs. I don't think anybody really knew this. They kind of alluded to it, I think, on the broadcast because someone actually asked me. He's hurting. Yeah, there's a, a, a local... Uh local sports therapist that uh, helped him out, got him geared up. Oh yeah, yeah and taped him up. Taped him up, uh, got him breathing good and everything else, and uh, she was awesome. Uh, friend of friend of ours here from the uh, from Riverglade, and uh, she, was, she was just good to work with him all day, making sure, and uh, man oh man, he just, he, he went right through it. it good. He went through it, and I think he got out to a lead, and I saw him, uh, we might see it in the video clips too, that he, in the air, he kind of looked over, he was just checking his lead, obviously he's hurting, so he was going as fast as he needed to, uh, the guys didn't close up on him, but obviously he was just kind of managing his lead, so he can't really base too much off that, but I, I don't know if you've broken ribs. I have cracked ribs before. I don't even know how guys do that. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he, he wrote a nice, comfortable pace for himself. Yeah. Uh, more done when he had to, but I mean, just his style is so, so flawless. Yeah, he's, he's next level right now in Canada, so uh, yeah, congrats on him. The streak continues. He's gonna got four more motos left to go. I mean, like I said, Tyler and Sean want to break that. Yeah. But, uh, I don't, uh, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's, yeah, he's, he's on, like you say, it's, it reminds you of the old Ross Pedersen days. See, we're, we're old. Yeah, and I remember, I remember when I was racing, Ross was riding all the nationals, and we were all traveling around and everything else, and he went, Ross is just, he's a man. He it was just, a big deal, he'd show up, and you're like, oh man, Ross is here. Yeah, and he just, he dominates <laughs> yeah. every day. Every, right. every, and race six motos, four motos a day, whatever yeah. he did. Yeah, I managed to sneak in another Ross Pedersen uh, reference there, folks. All right. All right, well, let's move over to the uh, the 250 class. A couple things we need to talk about uh, for the um, Thor uh, parts Kawasaki team. Uh, Dylan Rumpel well, didn't, didn't race today, so he was here, but uh, he's not quite ready yet after hitting his head. So they're going to wait to Deschambault, so we didn't see the 138 out there. Uh, Jake Piccolo rode practice out there. You can see something was up. He didn't even do the finish line jumps here because of the way uh, Hand. I mean, his right hand is swollen from a crash he had before. I don't know if it was before last week or the one he had last week, but either way, his right hand does not look good. Uh, it looks, uh, hands normally, I, I'm guessing something's broken in there. So, yeah. tough break for him, the defending champ. Thinks he's probably going to head home to get to get it looked at. Uh, that's what he said to me afterwards because just the waiting times here and stuff like that is just not going to work out. So, yeah. he's probably going to head home. So, unfortunately, I think we may be losing the, uh, the number one plate. Yeah, so that's tough. Uh, also, I want to shout out to uh, Tyler Gibbs, man, the 22 out there. Him and uh, he and um, Devin Smith got together late. I, it's funny because I saw them coming. He was closing in on Devin, and I'm like, oh, okay, two BC kids, this is going to get tough. And I was over a different part of the track. Turns out they went down. I didn't realize both of them went to the hospital. So, yeah, yeah. so they're. Yeah, Devin, uh, sorry, Devin went, he, he went back to the pitch, but he was really sore of stomach. He, I think he was throwing up as well, so he's getting looked at. Uh, Tyler left on a backboard, but hopefully he's okay. Sounds like, uh, I was talking to the guys, they think he's probably fine, precautionary, but uh, maybe a bit of pain. Yeah, no, he uh, thrown up blood, and he was, I was over the pits and stuff, and he was just, yeah, he was not good, so. Right. Um, hoping, hoping that it's maybe fatigue and the heat, potentially, but hopefully there's nothing internal in this. Right. Okay, so just kind of moving up here, just kind of a couple things that I uh, want to talk about here. Uh, tough day for Quinn Amiot. He had a great first moto up there in fifth up in the battles. Second moto, uh, early he got together. I think he said he was on the outside. He came in and, uh, and uh, Jeremy Mackay, they got together. He kind of got squirrely, put his leg out. His right leg ended up in the back of his wheel. His left one was still on the bike, so he ended up doing the splits. Jeremy didn't know he was there. He was getting back on the throttles. He's got, so he's got a burn on his right leg, and he's really kind of tweaked his hamstring on his left leg. So he toughed out a 20th there. To, he got himself a point. So uh, he's going to see how it goes this week. They're going to stay out here and do some traveling around. But uh, a hamstring could be a tough one to get through. Hopefully he can just tape it up and be all right. So a tough one for Quinn. He ended up 13th overall. Not where he wants to be, but there were some other weird things that happened, so it didn't affect his points that much, is what he said. So he could have been a lot worse. Um, I was impressed by Tyler Yates, the number 66 out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a guy. He's traveling the whole thing. He's from uh, he's from Duncan, BC. You can't get much farther away than the island yeah. or there in BC. So yeah. congrats to him, number 66. Great race for him. 11-11 uh, for 11. So I just wanted to kind of uh, I haven't uh, really talked about him before. So just wanted to mention him. Uh, who else we got here? Mitchell Harrison went into this with the points lead. I think he had a one-point lead going in. 
flat tire in that first moto. Yeah. Saw him rolling around. I thought he was going to quit. Next thing you know, he came out, pulled in, got a new wheel put on, came back out, ended up 15th. Yeah, no, he was, he was going. He trying to keep those points alive. Keeping the points, yeah, he ends up, I think he's down like 20 points now, though. But uh, yeah. third place in the second moto, though, the, the top guys ended up quite spread out, uh, the top three. And they were miles ahead of the next guys, though. It was, it was pretty yeah. impressive, those three dudes. Yeah. But, uh, so uh, Wyatt Kerr, too, I want to mention him, man. Great starts for him. I, I know I have it on the video. I'm coming around, I'm looking over the thing. I was at 34, he's up there. I think he pretty much pulled the whole shot in that second one. So yeah. then he was in that battle with like uh, Racine and uh, Benick and, and uh, Mackay came up into that battle. So yeah. good for him, 9-6 uh, for seventh uh, there for him. I mentioned Julian Benick, the number 12 there. Good to see him back. He's kind of beat up, but it looks like uh, maybe he's getting through it now because he looks solid out there, the number 12. Yeah. Right? Uh, sixth place for him. Uh, William Crete, last week he got both hole shots. This week he got a hole shot. He ran up there. He's looking comfortable up there in the top. I don't know if you haven't yeah. noticed. Yeah, he, it, was, it, was, it was awesome. I mean, those, those guys were running off pretty close together. That, that 250 class is so tight. It is tight. Yeah, the 251 is. It's fun to watch because the battling is so close. Yeah. 450 is fun to watch because Dylan could have a perfect season and because Tyler and Moff are so close together. So yeah, and it was like it was it was good. They were the 450s are a great race tonight. Like, usually we've seen somebody pull out go, but I mean, I mean Dylan had to work through to get the lead. It was, it was nice to see. Oh yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's worth it. So be sure if you're anywhere near Quebec City, make sure you get up to Deschambault next week. We've only got two rounds left, so. Uh, Sebastian Racine, I mean, he almost had the win that second moto last week at Desha, or sorry, Sandali. Uh, he didn't have the pace of the top guys this week. Uh, again, tracks are so different as we go across the country that uh, people shine at different tracks. So, not the day he wanted. A 7-4 for fourth overall for him. Um, Jeremy Mackay, his first ever overall podium. He's had one podium before. He went 3-5. Uh, Man, look good. He was way back in that second one. Had to close in on that battle I was just talking about uh, with uh, Racine and, and Bannock. He got up there, caught them, and made some passes and ended up on the podium. Yeah, no, it was yeah, amazing. Very good for him. Uh, one and two traded places. Uh, Josiah Natsky won the first moto and second in the second one. Ryder McNabb went 2 1 for the overall. So they tied in points, yeah. but uh, Ryder takes over the points lead now. Yeah. They had a great pace going. Great pace. I mean, that's uh, crazy. At first, I was just, I did a little interview with uh, Ryder McNabb afterwards. That first one, he was trying hard, but he saw that uh, he's like, okay, I've got. To, he saw it happen with uh, troubles for Mitchell Harrison, so he knew he was making up an awful lot of points on him. So he knew that uh, Josiah just showed up in the East, so he's not in the points uh, battle. So he let him go and showed what he had in that second one. Man, Ryder's Ryder's back, man. He's been off the pass a little bit, but uh, I think uh, it's going to be tough to take this away from him. Yeah, he was, he was, you could tell the pace he was going in that last moto especially, and yeah, there was no one touching him right then. No, so now we've got Josiah Nasky, who's not in the points against him. We've got Mitchell Harrison, who's battling him, but now lost a bunch of points because of his flat tire. Yeah. And Piccolo, now probably gone, so man, it is going to be tough to beat, uh, to steal these 20 points back from uh, from Ryder McNabb. Yeah, and, but you know what, it's anybody's game right now with those, they're, they're all so, so evenly matched. I mean, every weekend. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's great watching the series, how tight it is. All right, well, I mean, uh, that's kind of anything you notice out there that you want to talk about. I mean, again, like I say, I just want to say, the crowd was fantastic. It was really cool. I mean, I'm bumping into people. Like, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, no, it, it, I, I'm just thankful. I mean, thankful for uh, Jet Works coming down this way and being, uh, being part of it and having us back on the series uh, with the, uh, now that we can get here, I guess, that's the biggest thing. The last couple of years, we a big, big phone call. The floor's open yet. We've kind of locked ourselves down here in Atlantic Canada, but the uh, nice thing is having everybody pack. It's nice to see some plates from everywhere else also now. Exactly. A bunch of Americans made it up too, so it's kind of yeah. cool to see that happening. Cool to see there are so many BC kids here. It's amazing that with the price of gas and everything, it's amazing yeah. that so many families have made the decision this year of all years to make do the whole thing. Yeah, no, it's nice to see. It's just, and, and, you know what, that's the big with motocross is people, right? And they all, they all just love the sport. Just love it, right? See, I remember when I was a kid, I remember being in Ontario and I'd hear the, the Nationals were going and somebody like, we're going out to River Glade. It's I'm like, wow, it just sounded so amazing. And now, now I've been able to be here many, many times now, but it's still so nice to be out here. And no, I'm, we're just thankful. It just, you know, it's just nice to have everybody down here to visit. And yeah, it's great, great having everybody around. Nice. Last time I saw you was at in Anaheim, right? Yeah, Anaheim one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right, man. Yeah. Hanging, well, hanging out with Fox. So hanging good. out with Fox, that, uh, the pit bike racing, that was a yeah, blast. it was a good time. Nice, but hey, thank you very much, and uh, things going well over at Toys? Everything's going good. We're happy, and uh, 
Thanks for all you do. Yeah. yeah. Keeps hey, everybody informed. What else, am I, what else am I gonna do? Keeps everybody informed and thanks to you for doing <laughs> that because everybody knows what's happening just from you. And how about the fact that you forgot to bring us beer up here? Alright, that was my fault. Yeah, I was I was uh, <laughs> get sidetracked on the way here. You got any more provincials coming up here? What's next yeah, for the track? So uh, we had a few more provincial races in the region and finished off in September, so we're we're pumped. We're looking forward to the next event here. Nice. Well, uh, this has been the FXR Race Review. Thank you very much to Larry Norther from Toys for Big Boys and a uh, partner here at the track. Uh, how's, uh, how's Earl doing? Earl's doing great and Lee's doing great. They're just, like I say, great guys and uh, Earl's, Earl's so pumped uh, just having the event and having the people out and same as Lee. We're just... He was pumped first thing this morning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just nice. We're just so happy to have everybody here and having a good track today made a, made a difference. All right, well, hey, if you didn't get a chance, make sure you go watch it on Ride TV. You get to watch the race because it was amazing. The crowds, just fun to see that many people lining the fences. Uh, hot day, great. Next up is the E Can. So we got uh, Friday, Saturday in uh, Deschambeau. And then, man, we've only got two rounds left. So oh, it's all good. Going to be good. So thank you very much. This has been the uh, FXR Race Review. We'll see you uh, in Quebec. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, man.